Yeah, good evening everyone. You are welcome to the live um, streaming of our Facebook um, Bible study summary for this week. And the topic here with is becoming mature as stewards of God's mysteries. And has to do with lessons for women. And power reading the study is called that from the first Corinthians chapter three and four. Before we go further, let's thank God for this beautiful time and um, for his faithfulness over us to come back for this very episode this week. Internal Rock of Ages, Father, we thank and bless you. We exalt you because you are only being you. And we thank you for the protection, for the guidance, and for the provision, O oh Lord. We say, Blessed be your holy name in Jesus' name. Our Internal Rock of Ages, Father, as we will be summarizing this episode, um, summary of the first Corinthians chapter 3 and 4. We want you to come with us, stay with us, lead in our heart. Let this germinate and bring out the fullness of your word in our lives. In Jesus' precious name, we are prayed. Amen. Welcome back once again, every viewers. Um, from the first Corinthians chapter 3, going through the verses 1 to 3. However, brothers and sisters, I could not talk to you as to spiritual people, but as to worldly people that is dominated by human nature. Mere infant in Christ, I fed you with milk, not solid food, for you were not yet able to receive it. Even now you are still not ready. You are still worldly, you are still worldly, that is, we're being controlled by ordinary impulses, the sinful capacity. For as long as there is jealousy and strife and discord among you, are you not unspiritual? And are you not walking like ordinary men, unchanged by faith? Here, Apostle Paul made the Corinthian church to understand that he could not address them as people who were matured, but as infants, and worldly as much as the works of the flesh, that is, jealousy and quarreling, which is not meant to be named among matured believers, as still found among them. So also, as Dora of Zion, jealousy and quarreling and other manifestations of the flesh should not be found among us, as we daily die to the flesh and our life to Christ at the place of prayer in our consecration to God. That does not mean we cannot disagree to agree, but we must not give place to anger. Emphasis on this could be seen in Ephesians 4, 31. Going further to the first Corinthians chapter 3, in verses 4 to 8, the lesson there him. For when of one of you says, I am of Paul, that is a disciple of Paul, and another one, I am a disciple of Apollos. Are you not ordinary people? What then is Apollos, and what is Paul? Just servant, through whom you believed Christ, even as the Lord appointed to each his tax. So neither is the one who plants, nor the one who waters anything, but God, I mean only God, who causes the growth. He who plants and he who waters a one in but each will receive his own reward according to his own level. Here, 
we can see that our focus as children of God should not be on the minister of gospel. It has nothing to do with the minister of gospel. He is a vessel. Through which we believe but on our Lord Jesus Christ. Our focus should be on Jesus Christ. Not on the vessel. Not on the minister. We could see from, from that passage that says, What then is Apollo? And what then is Paul? They are just servants. Ministers are servants. They are vessels. It is only God that make that causes the growth. Going further in First Corinthians three, looking at chapter nine to eleven, which says, "For we are good fellow workers, that is servants working together. You are God's cultivated field. That is His vineyard. That is God's building." According to the grace of God which was given to me, like a skillful master builder, I laid a foundation, and now another is building on it. For each one must be careful how he builds on it. For no one can lay a foundation other than the one which is laid, which is already laid, and which is who? Jesus Christ. We can see in leading others to Christ or in discipling others, we had to work together with God as every soul is likening to God's field or building through the help of the Holy Spirit. Apostle Paul was a very good builder and he was able to build a solid foundation through his ministry to the Corinthian church, which is our Lord Jesus Christ as the solid foundation. Jesus should be the center of our message and not church. Or the servant of God. That was the third lesson there. And going further in the same chapter, verses 12 to 15, another lesson from this verses which says, But if anyone builds on the foundation with gold, silver, precious stone, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will be clearly shown for the day would disclose it because it is to be revealed with fire and the fire will testify the quality and the character and worth of each person's work if any person's work which he has built remains he will receive a reward but if any person's work is burned up he will suffer the loss yet he himself will be saved but only as through Fire. The lesson therein, after the only foundation which is our Lord Jesus Christ has been laid in building and preparing his church for his coming, people may build whatever they desire on it, but the Lord will show how good each people's work is at his return, as everyone's work will be tested with fire to reveal the motive for which we have done all we have done in his vineyard. We must always have the right motive to everything we do for God in his house or for kingdom. So as for it not to be a wasted effort as a daughter of the kingdom. The fifth lesson here is called from verses 16 to 17 of the same chapter. Do you not know and understand that you are the temple of God and does the Spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone destroys the temple of God, God will destroy the destroyer. For the temple of God is holy, it is sacred, and that is what you have. We have God's temple. We can see from there. We have God's temple, and the Spirit dwells in us. Hence, we must possess our vessel, our body. In holiness, as God will destroy anyone who defile his temple, which we have. God is holy and he expects us to be holy. Holiness is simply obedience to the word of God. 
even when it is not convenient. Obeying God should be her priority as daughter of Zion, as he is the only one who can destroy both body and cast the soul to hell. And that we can portray from the book of Matthew 10, 28 and Luke 12, 4 as well. Going further, the sixth lesson from the same chapter, um, verses 18 to 23, which reads, Let no one deceive himself. If anyone among you drinks that he is wise in this age, let him become a fool, so that he may become wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness before God. For it is written, He one who catches the wise and clever in their craftiness. God tells. The Lord knows the he, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise that they are useless. As wise as you had to God, your thoughts are so useless. So let no one boast in men. For all things are yours, whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas, or the world, or life, or death, or things present, or things to come. All things are yours, and you belong to Christ, and Christ belongs to God. Here, we could see that the wisdom of the world is foolishness, which God and the Lord knows. The thoughts of the wise as they are vain. Hence, no mortal man should boast in anything, as all things belong to only to those who are in Christ and in Christ God. Our pursuit should be to know more of Jesus as he is wisdom personified. That we could say that we've ended the lessons in the chapter 3 of the first Corinthians. Going to the next chapter, which is First Corinthians chapter 4, let's read from verses 1 to 5. So then let us be regarded as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. In this case, moreover, it is required of steward that one be found faithful and trustworthy. But it matters very little to me, and I may be judged by you or any human court. In fact, I do not even judge myself. I am aware of nothing against myself and I feel blameless. But I am not by this acquainted. It is the Lord who judges me. So do not go on passing judgment before the appointed time. But wait until the Lord comes. For it will both bring to the light the things that are hidden in darkness and disclose the motives of the heart. Then each one's praise will come from God. Yes. We are no judge. We are no church. It's, it's, it's being sinful to be a church to others. And to this, we could learn that Apostle Paul established that he and other ministers of the gospel, that the Corinthian church were dividing themselves after are the servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. And in that role, it is expected that each and every one be found faithful as the Lord will judge their works. When the time comes and we are not to judge anyone, as all the hidden things will be brought to light at the coming of the Lord. Hence, as daughters of Zion, we had to be faithful in whatever the Lord had committed into our hand. As the day of reckoning is coming, the question is, will the Master find us faithful? I pray that we shall be met and we shall be faithful as the master come forth in jesus name we shall not lose the reward of uh, the labor of love that we had contributed to make this kingdom going further in the first corinthian chapter 4 Going through the verses 6 to 13, which says, Now I have applied these things to myself and Apollo for your benefits, believers, so that you may learn from us not to go beyond what is written, so that none of you will become arrogant and boast in favor of one against the other. 
for who regard you as superior or what set you as special? What do you have that you did not receive? And if, in fact, you received it, why do you boast as if you had not received it? Already you have become rich. You have ascended your thrones and become kings with their house. And how I wish that you did reign as king so that we might reign with you. For I think God has exhibited all the apostles at the end of the line, like men sentenced to death, because we have become a spectacle to the world. Both to angels and to men, we are fools for Christ, but you are so wise in Christ. We are weak, but you are strong. You are highly esteemed, but we are dishonored. To so this present hour, we are both hungry and thirsty. We are continually poorly dressed, and we are roughly treated, and the wonder homeless. We work, working hard with our own hands. When we are reviled and ab verbally abused, we are blessed. When we are persecuted, we have it patiently and endure. When we are slandered, we try to be conciliatory and answer softly. We have become like the scum of the world, the dregs of all things, even all till now. Yeah. The eighth lesson is taken from those verses. And we can see that we are not to boast of the grace we have received, as we have acquired it by our, by own, by our own strength or ability. No, we shouldn't. Apostle Paul sees his life as one, but on the display by God, before the world as a man, condemned to death. He and other apostles choose to be fools, weak, dishonorable, live in poverty, be hungry, be homeless, and be up by life. They were mistreated, insulted, and persecuted, but they followed Christ. Example, by blessing those who harmed them. This is worth emulating. For the sake of the gospel, we might endure insult as daughters of Zion in order to win such people to Christ. May the Lord help us, grant us the ability to endure all this persecution in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And the last of the lesson there is called from verses 14 to 21, which says, I do not write these things to shame you, but to warn and advise you as my beloved children. For even if you were to have 10,000 teachers in Christ, yet you would not have many fathers. For I became your father in Christ, Jesus, through the good news. So I urge, the, I urge you, the imitators of me, for this reason I have sent Timothy to you, who is my beloved and faithful child in the Lord, and he will remind you of my way of life in Christ, just as I teach everywhere in every church. Now, some of you have become arrogant and pretentious, as though I were not coming to see you, but I will come to you soon. If the Lord is willing, and I will find out not just the talk of these arrogant people brought their power, for the kingdom of God is not based on talk, but on power. Which do you prefer? Shall I come to you with a rod, or with love and a gentle spirit? Yeah. From this, we have the last lesson. And we could see from there that Apostle Paul made the Corinthian church to know he was not writing to make them feel bad about living for status, wealth, and comfort. But he was writing to help them set their priorities right. Since he led them to Christ, he wants them to go beyond understanding his teachings and to follow his steps as he follows Christ. The place of spiritual fathers and mothers cannot be overemphasized, as no one knows all, and we should also be good examples to those coming behind us, which I pray that may the Lord grant us the ability to be good examples because um, what we see in Christianity today is people check at your own behavior. They want to see if Christ really lives in you. If you are Christ-like, 
it is there they can take what you believe in. May the Lord help, guide, and teach us to this journey, to the kingdom, in the mighty name of Jesus. And it is my prayer that the Almighty God will grant us the grace to keep this word in our hearts and use it as guide in our covenant work within and help us to make it to his internal rest at the end of our journey in life. In Jesus' mighty name.